You are listening to the French Kiss Life podcast, all about living artfully and well. I'm Tanya Lee, your hostess. Let's get started. Hey, y'all. Do you like that Southern accent? Someone asked me the other day to speak Southern and I tried and it was laughable, which is crazy because I used to have such a thick country accent. In fact, I remember I couldn't say dad or daddy. It was Diddy. (laughs) It's like, like P Diddy. That's what I called my dad, Diddy. But I've lost it, which is sort of sad. Although Glenn says when I get angry, it comes out, but I don't hear it anymore. But my daughter is getting ready to move to Nashville, Tennessee. So I'm working on my Southern accent. I don't know. I think it's still there. So let's just dive right into what we are talking about today. Because it has something to do with being Southern, Southern charm, (laughs) which I did not get the Southern charm gene. But I do want to talk about six surprising reasons why every woman should learn the art of charm. Now, I don't know how or when I became a socially awkward person, but the day I tried to make conversation with a math teacher by asking her what two plus two was, was the day I knew I had a problem. And so (laughs) that's a true story. It's embarrassing, but it really did happen. And I wanted to change it. So my first step to addressing my social issue was enrolling in an etiquette class for leaders. And in my mind, I was thinking etiquette must be the answer, right? or at least that's what I told myself. So the next thing you know, I was having a color analysis and practicing proper handshakes. Now, don't get me wrong. These are great things to know, but they didn't solve my deeper issue, being a social weirdo. But at least I was wearing the right colors and I had a firm grip. I could grip a hand better than anybody. But I was tired of the sweaty palms and struggling to find words and feeling out of place and shrinking into the background of life. I wanted to meet people, have more fun, have interesting conversations, and be the kind of woman that people actually wanted at the party. So I set out to learn the art of charm. And while I've experienced many of the benefits of improving my social skills, such as better relationships, more opportunities, influential connections, a better career, more money. The most surprising benefits had nothing to do with outward rewards. At the end of the day, we spend the majority of our time with ourselves. And this is the relationship that is the most important. So what does this have to do with charm? Well, what I discovered is that a journey to charm is a journey into yourself. Your relationship with others is a reflection of the relationship that you have with yourself. So when you love yourself, you're able to love others. When you care for yourself, you care for others. When you respect yourself, you respect others. When you appreciate yourself, you appreciate others. I think you see where I'm going with this, right? So when I set out to improve my social skills, I had no idea how I'd need to look within myself. To become a charming woman, you must drop a lot of the nasty habits that are destroying your relationship with you. And this, my friend, is the most important relationship you have. So here are six surprising benefits of learning the art of charm. The first one is you really learn to like yourself. I've often thought that perhaps the journey we're all on is this journey back to ourselves, to our natural state of being, which isn't self-loathing but it's self-adoration. To be charming, you must stop trying to be liked and learn to like yourself. It's a decision. It's a daily practice. When I started to like myself, I was surprised at how my social skills improved dramatically without a lot of effort. There was an ease to being around others because I was at ease with myself. But like so many women for so many years, I tried to get people to like me so that I could feel likable. That never works. It's not their job to like you. That is your job. Plus, no one can create a feeling of likability. We create our feelings with our thoughts in our head. And so all those years I was trying to get people to like me, they could never give me what I really wanted. And that was the feeling of liking myself. And I realized that charming people, they like themselves. 
It's why they can walk into a room and just relax and have fun and enjoy and be playful because they're not walking around with a crazy head full of self-loathing. So in order to be more charming, I had to learn to like myself. It's a novel idea. Okay. Second thing, second benefit, you stop outsourcing your emotional life. When you think about why you want to be liked, ask yourself why, because it's always a feeling you're after and no one can create your feelings for you except you. Yet so many people walk into a room wanting others to behave a certain way to make them feel better. We seek words of approval, glances of admiration, and acts of affection. We want our husband to act a certain way in order for us to feel secure or to feel happy. We want our children to behave a certain way in order for us to feel happy. It's not their job. It's a lot of pressure on your husband and your kids. What if you just let them be who they are and you stop outsourcing your emotional life to others so that you become an emotional master. You know how to master your own emotions. I've noticed that charming people, they don't outsource their emotional life to others because they know that their emotions are their job. So the charming woman, she takes command of her presence and she decides how she's going to feel around others. She doesn't let them dictate that for her. She understands that chances are they can't even handle their emotional life. So why in the world would she hand over hers to them? She doesn't. No emotional outsourcing. Okay, the next benefit of charm is that you have so much more fun. When you really like who you are and you take responsibility for your experience, you discover that there's so much fun to be had in any room that you enter you begin to see the humor and the beauty in us humans. You start to show up as your genuine self, which is always more fun than portraying some version of you, trying to please everyone, trying to get people to like you. You know that the party lives within you and you start to bring the festivities to every room you enter. I tell my clients all of the time, the world truly is your playground. And with charm, it is just a ton more fun. Okay, next benefit, and this is a big one. You stop being so easily offended. I have a family member who will remain anonymous, who is always pissed off about something. She loves to be offended. She interprets life through her very negative filter. If someone rolls their eyes, she takes it personally. If someone doesn't speak in the right tone, she becomes hurt. If someone doesn't agree with her, she's angry. Her energy pushes people away and charm is all about drawing people towards you, not repulsing them. And I know for a fact, because I coach women all of the time, some of y'all are easily offended. You take everything so personally. And when you do that, you end up just carrying the weight of the world on your shoulders. Now, I will have to say that this is one that I haven't struggled with a lot. It takes a lot to offend me. And I have to give a shout out to my dad. My dad is the least offended person I've ever met. In fact, I've seen people say things and do things that would probably offend the Dalai Lama. And my dad, he, it doesn't faze him. It's like water off of a duck's back. And one day I asked him, I said, dad, like, why doesn't that bother you? And he said, because I like feeling good too much to be offended. And I thought to myself, that's brilliant. That is so brilliant. My dad, he favors how he feels over what's happening in the external world. And I am biased, but I will have to say that my dad is one of the most charming people you'll ever meet. People love to be around him because he is so unfazed by life. He just keeps being him. He keeps shining even when it's so bright that other people have to put on their shades. He doesn't care, which makes him so charming. So shout out, dad. Thank you for teaching me not to be so easily offended. I love you. Okay. Next benefit. You genuinely love people. For years, I tried to avoid people. In my mind, they were dangerous. They couldn't be trusted. They were scary. They'd hurt me. And all of this was based on my past and the thoughts I had in my head about other people. But to be charming, it requires that you love yourself enough that loving others becomes so super easy. 
Charming people really like other people. And you choose to like other people based on your story about them. And so one of the benefits that I discovered by learning the art of charm is that, wow, I actually really do like people. I find them fascinating. Their quirks, their craziness, their humanness, all of it. It's so fascinating. And so when I walk into a room and I'm just loving people, you know, they love me back usually. And if they don't, they're just confused. Bless their hearts. (laughs) Okay. Next benefit, you become more confident. When I set out to learn the art of charm, I didn't realize that what I was really going to be learning is self-confidence because I'm convinced it's not the most attractive or talented person that does incredible things in life. It's the most confident. You must gather up the courage to walk into rooms and own your space. You must stop shrinking out of fear. You must show up and give life your very best. You must keep trying until you create the result you want. You must hold yourself with confidence. And what does this have to do with charm? Because we admire people who are confident. And the definition of charm is to arouse admiration. Therefore, charm equals confidence. In a room full of people, what I've come to realize is that person who is able to lead him or herself that instills trust in us. We want to follow them. We want to get to know them. Their confidence is contagious. And therefore, that comes across as charming. Now, sometimes people will say to me, but isn't that arrogance to be confident in a room? And I'm not talking about that kind of confidence. That's faux confidence. That's actually built on insecurity. True confidence comes from a place of abundance from joy. When you are truly self-confident, you believe in others. You inspire others. You are other people's cheerleader. You don't see confidence as some resource that is full of limitation and lack. You see it as something that's available enough for all of us. And so the charming person, because they are so confident, they are always calling us to be our most confident selves. And again, this was a surprising benefit of learning the art of charm. I had no idea that true charm was all about creating true self-confidence. So I want you to imagine yourself walking into a room overflowing with love for yourself and others with this solid foundation of self-confidence, self-respect, and magnetic energy. That, my friend is what it's like to live as a charming person. And for no other reason than the relationship you have with yourself, learning how to charm the room is one of the most amazing adventures you will ever, ever go on. And it will open up doors for new opportunities, new connections, better relationships, more abundance. But again, even deeper, it's about the relationship that you have with yourself. Because if I've learned anything, it's this charming people are charming because they've charmed themselves. They delight greatly in their own company. They really admire themselves. And therefore, when they walk into a room, they have so much to give, so much to offer. They need nothing from you and they want everything for you. And my friend, nothing could be more charming than that. (laughs) Thank you.